Talking to Motivation, I'm Ron Henderson, better known as the Fitness King. I'm sitting here with the one and only Nathan Block. He is the executive producer and director for Distant Calling Pictures. Welcome to Motivation. How are you? Thank you very much. Doing well. Thanks okay. for having me on the show. My pleasure. I want to find out about your film, all your work that you do, Nathan. But before we get in that, can you do one thing for me? What's that? One little thing. Share one thing about yourself that most people don't know. I do this all the time. It's a tradition on motivation that most people don't know about you. One thing. I have full conversations with my cat. Okay, all right. Okay. Literal full conversations. Okay, all right. Okay, folks. He's got conversations with his cats. Okay. <laughs> How many cats do you have? Just one. Okay. What kind of cat? Siamese? Uh, she's a tabby. Um, uh, but she's got a little bit of Abyssinian in her, so she's really, okay. she's really pretty. All right. Does it work? These conversations? Is she learning anything? Are you learning? I, I think I think I learn more than than she does. But okay. Does she help you with your filmmaking? No, and she she likes to distract from that because okay. it takes the attention off of her. So okay. All right. Well, it's my pleasure to have you on today. Thank you. Let me ask you a question. First of all, when you talk about filmmaking and even getting involved in that, did you have any type of a history with that, like through high school or? Elementary school, any of that stuff? Not, not really, actually, because I sort of got into filmmaking very late in life. It was sort of a thing where uh, I went to school. My my high school education took place uh, at a smaller uh, private school in North Minneapolis. Okay, what what school was that? Uh, Fourth Baptist. Oh, really? Yes. I went to Fourth Baptist. Interesting. <laughs> no kidding. <Yeah. laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, the, the, so then you know there was oh, yeah. there was not a whole lot there. Uh, so at any rate, then when I went to the University of Minnesota, it was quite a change. But as much as the University of Minnesota offered back in the early '90s when I was going, uh, they did not have a film production right. program. So I studied film extensively. I have a degree in it actually. That was one of my majors, and. I just sort of graduated then and got into the exhibition business. I own movie theaters, that's what I do for a living. Yeah. But I had never really thought about making film until uh, I stumbled across something called the 48-Hour Film Project. Mm -hmm. And that was my introduction to making a movie was I actually made one. Or okay. let me let me rephrase that. I actually okay. tried to make right. one. Okay. Okay. And uh, But even before you be let me interrupt you. Before you even got involved in that, in high school now that you in college you didn't do anything with film at all. But you knew you were not, interested even then? Not in the production aspect. Okay. No. No, never never did anything. Yeah, it was something that had always interested me and I guess it was the sort of thing where I thought, well, I'll get into it later, or maybe someday I'll have an opportunity. Right. But there was there were a lot of things that were happening to me at the time. But when I was in college, I was running a, a, a like a movie theater it was a film program. We showed movies uh, every weekend, and that was funded by the student union. So I had a lot going on, and it was just something that I didn't have a lot of spare time to pursue. And then when I was 25, I bought my own movie theater, and that took up a lot of my time. So it was just something that. I thought, well, I'd love to do it, but it just right. never, the opportunity was never there and the timing was never right. Sure. And let me ask you, what, and I'm, I'm going to go there with this, what actually made you interested in getting involved in buying a movie theater? I have always loved movies. Okay. Right from the time I've been, uh, I was young. Mm -hmm. I have always loved movies and they've always fascinated me and they've always been my favorite of the art forms. Mm -hmm. And at the time I thought well there's nothing that I want to do more than own a movie theater okay. and I have been blessed exceedingly I have no complaints but now to be able to make them I've sort of found a new passion a new right. love in my the second half of my life which I never would have thought that I I would good for you good for you good for you so, so do you do, do when you look at people that make films do you look at somebody like what's the guy's name Tarantino hmm. do you admire his work or is he no oh yeah, yeah. Tarantino is definitely one of the guys that I, I I was coming up in my film knowledge when he was getting popular. Reservoir Dogs oh, yeah. came out in, in when I was in college in '92, right. and everybody was talking about it. Oh, you've got to see Reservoir Dogs. Blah 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 blah. 
And I did. And I saw it. And then I saw... And that was his film? Yeah, that was his film. I didn't even realize that was a very good movie. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very well, and then he followed that up with Pulp Fiction, which yeah. many consider to be his best work. Yeah. And cool. that came out in 94, and I saw it at a sneak preview a couple of weeks before it came out to the general right. public. And back when the Suburban World Theater in Minneapolis yeah. was running in oh, yeah. seat, 700 people, and that was an experience I will never forget, seeing mm -hmm. that film with that audience. And mm -hmm. yeah, Tarantino is definitely one of the guys that I admire, but the Scorsese and, oh, yeah. and Coppola and... Uh, uh, they're just all of the greats I definitely admire and, right. and definitely take influence from and right. even even smaller uh, smaller guys like Leonard Brett Leonard sure. who did a lot of stuff in the 90s and mm -hmm. Russell Mulcahy who did a few things in the 80s and yeah. so yeah I, I definitely take inspiration from from a lot of those guys Wow wow let me ask you this question when you look at theaters like and before we even get into your stuff, I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying just hearing about this stuff, okay? Uh, remember the Cooper Theater? Were you around when I was? Oh, of course. I grew, up, I grew up in St. Louis Park. So. Best popcorn in the world, the Cooper Theater. What? I would go back for two larges. That's how good it was. Oh, it, the, the whole, that whole theater, the whole theater was theater. amazing. It, 2001 Space Sausage. Did you see that there when it came out? No, that was a little bit before my time. I saw, uh, actually, I saw Hunt for Red October there. Yeah, I saw the Glory show. there. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I saw a number of things. Oh, um, uh, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. They oh, yeah. did a, they did a, oh, they brought it back. Yeah. And I saw that there. And, oh, right. I, yeah, the Cooper was, it's a real tragedy that we lost that beautiful I agree. theater. I agree. I agree. So, what motivated you to actually get, really go for it and really get into filmmaking? What was your motivation? I mean, I just, like I said, it was something that I really just kind of stumbled into, right. and it, this 48-hour film project thing, a friend of mine had done it, mm -hmm. and then she showed me her film, and I thought, I could do this, I could, do it, yeah. I could really do this, and so I ended up signing up for the competition okay. uh, in 2008, and it was a complete Disaster. What was it on? What did you do your piece on? Uh, I tried to do a dramatic suspense thriller, and there was espionage involved, and there were spies involved, mm -hmm. and it was just, it, you know, you always think that your first movie is going to be like your magnum opus, your Star Wars, your oh, really? Godfather. Really? You know, everybody thinks that, and, okay. and it's just, it's just not going to happen. No, you, no, you've no. got to be realistic about it, and. And it just, I didn't know what I was doing, and I wasn't very organized, and the whole thing was a disaster. And I said, well, I, I'm never going to let this happen again. And so I signed up the following year and, and completed the project. And, and the, the film that I made still wasn't very good by technical standards, but I'm still, uh, I did more of a dramatic piece. Okay. And I, I thought it came out better. There was still a lot of problems with it, but... I, I continued to do the project every year. It was just mm -hmm. filmmaking was something I did once a year with my friends. And then in 2014, I sort of hit the wall. Mm -hmm. And I just said, I've got to make this a bigger part of my life. I've got mm -hmm. to do this more than once a year. I've got to get better. I've got to improve my craft. Mm -hmm. And so since 2014, I've made anywhere from four to six short films in a given year. Get the hand. And Good for you. <laughs> thank you. Good for you. And That's great. Thank you. And mm -hmm. and I've just I think I'm I think I'm getting better and, and I've surrounded myself with mm -hmm. people that are much better at it than I am. I've mm -hmm. I've worked with amazing actors, amazing actresses, mm -hmm. amazing cinematographers, amazing sound people, but uh, a good buddy of mine who's just an unbelievable composer has written most of my music. Uh, it's just been... How do you get these people? Is it just your good looks that you just throw them in? What is it? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, well, it's like anything else. You network. Once you're in the business, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you meet somebody and they say, hey, I know so-and-so and they know how to do such-and-such. -and, -such. Right. and like a sound man introduced me to the cinematographer who's done a lot of work for me and okay. uh, he's won a couple of awards mm -hmm. uh, with films that we've done together and then uh, I've met other people through the actors say, hey, you got to meet this person. And then, so it's like anything else. Once you get into the business, you start learning who's who, you start meeting new people, working with new people, and then 
you develop synergy with some and, and mm -hmm. those are the people that you keep around. And, yep. and so yeah, I end up working with a lot of the same people, but when you have a good work flow sure. and people sure. understand you, yeah. it's, it makes it easier yeah. because, yeah. you know, you get on set, a movie set can be a very tense very place. Tense. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you have. Yeah, and, friends, yeah. and so it's and I, I'm a big I'm a big guy and I and I've got a big personality. I've got a big voice and mm -hmm. so I can be a little intimidating. But once people get to know me and they work with me, they realize, well, he's just a big teddy bear. Right, right. There's just mm -hmm. nothing to worry about. But when you work with somebody for the first time, they don't know that, and so exactly. it can be kind of frightening if you're not right. if you don't have that understanding of how yep. people work together. The process for actually coming up with your script for for a film. What's the process you use for that? It, it kind of depends. If I, I didn't really ever consider myself a screenwriter per se, mm -hmm. but we were talking about Tarantino earlier, and and he writes all of his stuff by and large. And so there have been a couple of stories that I really wanted to tell. And th there were certain things that I really wanted to say. So there, are, there have been a couple of films that I've written that I've, I've also ended up directing and producing. Okay. But <clears throat> I don't consider myself a, a screenwriter in the sense that that's the only thing I want to do is shoot my own stuff. Right. So mm -hmm. every once in a while, somebody, somebody will hand me a script and say, what do you think of this? Mm -hmm. I'll go, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, let's shoot it. And, there was a there was a horror movie that we did um, a couple of years back called From the River, mm -hmm. and it was for a horror contest that that uh, popped up locally, and I, I thought I thought I had a script and the the idea just wasn't coming together, and an actress that I've worked with in the past, Andrea Hopkins, she yeah. messaged me at about eleven o'clock at night. And she says, "Do you have a script yet for this challenge?" And I said, "No, I don't." And she says, "Well, I cooked up something. Do you want to read it?" And she sent it over, and I couldn't put it down. Mm -hmm. And I said, we are going to shoot this. Mm -hmm. And I felt that the story needed a little bit of polishing, so that I, I added a few ideas. And we shot it, and we won best script, best cinematography, Good for you. audience favorite. Good for you. And I was teasing her a little bit, because we were having some creative differences about the script, so then after the the festival, we were sitting around with our awards, and I, and I tapped your screenplay award, and I say, so, what do you think about the changes that I made to the script? And we had a good laugh over it. Yeah. But, you know, so every once in a while, and, and actually, almost the exact same thing happened a few months back. Um, my makeup artist that I work with on a lot of stuff, and she's worked for me for uh, a lot of different films, and we've had wonderful collaborations. Yeah. She handed me a short story she wrote like five years ago, and she said, what do you think about this? And I looked at it and I said, this is amazing. And she says, well, I really want to make this into a movie. Yeah. And I said, I'm gonna turn this into a screenplay. And I, and I, and I knocked it out in three days. Okay. And we, we talked about it, and right now we're trying to secure funding to because I really want to do a good job with it. And I, there's some special effects required, but it's just a wonderfully evil little horror movie that she okay. wrote, okay. and I can't wait to get behind the camera and shoot this. So that's kind of my latest project, is trying to get this one off the ground. Okay, and the one that you won all the awards for, how how long of the movie is that? Is that like uh, 16 minutes. 16 minutes, yeah. yeah. Do you have like a trailer for that? Oh, you can okay. see the whole film, it's on... But do you have a short trailer? Um, the reason I ask that, because a lot of times I like to just put it on at the end of our film or something. Oh, I see. No, actually, we, we never made a trailer okay. for it. Uh, with, for the short films, it, it's sort of weird to make a trailer because it, it's right. such a, a short film to begin sure. with. But, what was it about? Um, it's, it's about this couple who loses a child, mm -hmm. and then they are experiencing a presence in their home that right. they can't explain. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's like, the story. Is it like dead people? Is it like that? Kind of sort of. Okay. Sort of. There's a little bit of that in there. There's some okay. stuff that we borrowed from yeah, that. all Minnesota actors, by the way? Most yep. Of Minnesota, okay. Yep. We've okay. got, mm -hmm. yeah, we've got a, a really young uh, uh, Hispanic girl who, who was in the picture who is just incredible. And, uh, yeah, then we've got a 15-year-old a actress who acts alongside of her. And then, then the, the two 
adults playing the the couple or mm -hmm. we're all based in Minnesota and yeah it's just okay. a wonderful wonderful film and can they see it on YouTube yep okay where would they go can they go to your site to distant to calling stuff? pictures there we have our own channel on YouTube and pretty much everything that distant calling pictures has done is up there okay. uh, unless we're going for festival consideration I don't have it online until kind of that is done mm -hmm. but then uh, most of most of my recent stuff is up there and pretty much all of our back catalog okay. so yeah I'll watch that today, please do today <laughs> I'd love to hear your Today, opinion on I'm it. serious, Jeff. So what do you see for the future for you, as far as movies? What do you really want to do right now? I really want to do a feature film. I really, really, really want to do a feature film. And Something original? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I'd love to, I'd love somebody to bring me a script and go, hey, this is, this is my feature, what do you think? And I, I would love to do that. I, I really think it's time to do a feature. This, <clears throat> I've been toying with the idea of this script that was handed me by by my makeup artist Jada Knutson. I've really been thinking about turning that into a feature. Right now, it's just a uh, it's probably going to end up being a 20, 30 minute short the way that it's mm -hmm. the way that it's looking right now. But I'm thinking that if I were to sit down and hopefully have some other people collaborate with me, mm -hmm. that I could turn it into a feature, and that would be something that I would really like to to work on for the earlier part of next year and and of course the the Z Fest season is gearing up which is a local festival and probably arguably one of the best ones around and <clears throat> easily one of the best ones in the country in my opinion for showcasing local work and so pretty much anybody who's making films in Minnesota is gearing up for that I'm no exception I got my team put together and we're starting to work on a script and so yeah we'll probably start working on that for the latter part of the year too. Right. It sounds like you have a lot of people behind you but I'm assuming that's probably because you're, you're a good person. I say this because I remember a guy bought a place called the Blue Ox years ago downtown Minneapolis. I worked in his bar for him, restaurant, bar restaurant, three weeks for not one penny. Every single person worked for him for free to help him out. That said something wow. about him. So if you got these people that are lining up behind you, it's not about making money. Sometimes you just see you see their vision, and you want to participate with that. And people that typically would get paid a lot of times if they love what you're doing, will want to come along and join that party. Then get paid maybe later. I sure I sure hope so. <laughs> well, no, that's how it works. I work with people all the time to help them out. I like the lady I gave the money to. Okay, my wife. I hope you didn't hear that. <laughs> No, it, I, I have been I have been very blessed with the people that I work with, and I just hope that it, at the end of the day, I think that as a director, you succeed if your cast and crew is proud of the movie that you exactly, worked on. I would agree. And mm -hmm. even if everybody else says, "Well, yeah, it wasn't very good," or blah blah blah, if everybody was proud to have been a part of the production. Right you succeeded done a good job. and and that's I really try to make that happen I really try to make sure that everybody who walks off set had a great experience that we made a film that we can be proud of that mm -hmm. that we want to show our family and friends is like hey we did this right, right. and that's that's what I strive for I, obviously yeah do I want to win awards at festivals yeah do I want somebody to come along and, and pick me up and hand me money to make movies? Yeah. Sure, sure. Do, do I want everybody to say, yeah, Nathan makes great films? Yeah, of course I do, but I also, at, first and foremost, I want everybody that devotes time to be a part of my projects right. to enjoy doing it. And right. so far, <laughs> I, think, I think I'm succeeding there. Good, good. And hopefully, eventually, that will translate into bigger things. But I don't take lightly anybody who is a part of my films in Good any you. in any capacity. Good for you. And if you Nathan, if you had an, an unlimited budget right now, is there you know a movie there's something that you kind of like aha and said I really want to do this? What would you do right now if you had an unlimited budget? I'd What's make, that movie that's always been in your mind that you wanted to do? I'd, what would it be? Can you I'd share make it? a Civil War film. Okay, really? <laughs> I would make a Civil War yeah, film. Another I'd, glory, another glory. Yeah, something like that. There, there's just something. There's well. Any director, I think any director who is honest wants to make a big epic battle scene. Mm -hmm. And 
there is just something about about the Civil War, just that time period, right. how completely insane it was for this country mm -hmm. to have gone through that, and just the whole the whole mystique between the North and South, and obviously we still see echoes of it to this day, and the whole uh, the the different sides and and their in their viewpoints and the people caught in the middle, and of mm -hmm. course the whole racism aspect right, to it, right. but at, but at the end of the day, just to have, just to be able to, to show yep. the, the way that those, those fights were and the way that they would just line up and, and blow each other to pieces. It's crazy, without ducking behind them. Yeah, the military, just the military, the right. way that military was so rigid back right. then, and the, the amount of bravery that those guys had to have to go into combat like that, and you're literally... 20, 30 feet for your enemy and you're shooting at them and you're sitting in a line. I mean, just to be able to convey that and to be able to to shoot that would be unbelievable. I would love to do a picture like that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> are there any uh, takeaways that you'd love to see, you know, all the movies that you've made, are there any takeaways that you would love to see, or, you know, where your audience walks out of there? What is it that you're hoping that they take away from your movies, honestly? Well, when I, when I when I made an unalienable right for Z Fest, mm -hmm. which was a very 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 personal film, and I tried to, that was a tough film to write because I had a lot to say, and I needed and I knew that I needed to be very careful how I said it, mm -hmm. and I wanted to make it, I wanted to make it an issue where people walked out of the theater having seen the film and it would engage them in a dialogue rather than you sit there and you go okay this is the bad guy this right. is the good guy these are the people that we're supposed to be rooting for these are the people that we yep. aren't supposed to be rooting for yep. this is the position we're supposed to believe in this is the position that we're not supposed to believe in I wanted to leave it open-ended I wanted people to have to, to talk about it and I guess if people watch Unalienable Right what I want them to do is I want them to think before having children. Mm -hmm. I, re I really wanted them to think and plan things out and I think that there are just, there are a lot of children that are brought into the world that families haven't planned for I would agree. and sometimes people stay together because of children, they break right. up because of children yep. and there are no right and wrong answers to any of this, but the children end up but suffering. Children, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, and and so I wanted people to think about that, and I thought, well, what if it got to the point where it got so out of control that the government had to get involved? Right. And now, what would that mean? What would that mean for families? What would I, I that saw mean? that piece. I like that. Yeah. Thank you. And so that's, I guess, that was sort of the film that I really tried to make a big, huge statement rather than just. Well, yeah, you, you don't want to drink, which is what Glass Bottom was about, and and uh, from the river has a little bit. There are echoes of unalienable right from the river too okay. uh, about the proper way to, to raise children and not raise children. But unalienable right was probably the film that I that I took a big risk with, and it's like, okay, here here is something that we don't really talk about very often that I want you to think about. And it seems very personal. Are there any personal reasons in your history that you did that movie? I just you think know, that family life, childhood. <laughs> not really, not really, really. From my background, as opposed to Close like, I, I made a decision not to have children, mm -hmm. and, and and I don't really want to get into that because the reasons are personal; they're my own, yeah. and and I certainly don't advocate that people follow that lifestyle. But but I've gotten a lot of criticism. Maybe criticism isn't the right word, but I but I've received a lot of feedback from friends and family that maybe this wasn't the right choice and so I wanted to make a piece that sort of reflected sure. some of that right. and and give you a way to think about it in a different from a different point of view right. and that's what an alienable right was supposed to do and at the very least if, if you're going to have children then think about it because it's a it's an awesome responsibility and watching my you know, watching my parents give up everything to raise sure. me and my sister and the sacrifices that they made, and I think, 
to a degree, we've lost that sense of what it means to to raise a child. Everybody thinks, well, I'm going to be able to have my my life, and I've just got this this child as part of it. That's not really the way it works. Right. A child changes your entire life. You read my mind. You read my mind. Right. It changes everything. It changes everything. Oh, yeah. And people really need to think about that. And it's not like getting a dog. No, exactly. You know, and I, and I, I have. I have a pet, but I wouldn't ever compare that to raising uh, to raising a child. Mm -hmm. And I get a lot of w the common thing that I hear from parents or people that have kids is, "Well, you don't have kids, so you wouldn't understand." Yeah. Well, yeah, but see, that's why I don't have right, kids right. is because I understood it enough right, right, that right. I wasn't ready or right. the situation right. wasn't right. 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 right, and that doesn't get you a pass. Right. You have to. Just the way you plan out your life, right. you have to be planning out the lives of any offspring that you're going to bring into the world because you're responsible for that life for at least the first 18 years of their existence. Right. And that's all I want an unalienable right to say is that there needs to be a plan in place. Right. You right. need to be thinking yeah. about this yeah. because the consequences of, of uh, improperly raising a child don't just fall on you. Now it, be, it becomes a society right. problem. Right. That seems very heartfelt, and, and in closing, again, how can people get a hold of you? And are you looking for people to, to, to get on your team so when you need extras and you need people helping you? Are you looking for people for that? I am always looking for good people so what's to, the best to be way on the team. Get a hold of you? What's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Uh, the, the Distant Calling Pictures Facebook page, it's just like it sounds, Distant Calling Pictures. We're on YouTube, we're on Facebook. Uh, all of the correspondence that, that either page would generate goes directly to me. Uh, also, there's a, I've just got a basic email address, a distant calling pictures at gmail.com, and people can write me, and certainly if they want to be on the team, send me a message. If you want to tell me that my movies were great, send me a right, message. Right. If you want to tell me that they're crap, send me a message. Right, right. Any and all feedback right. is welcome. Sounds good. In the next 30 seconds, Say something to my viewing audience that might motivate that person that maybe thought about doing their own movie. 30 seconds. Just make it. Get a camera. Use your phone. Do whatever it takes. Just make a movie. If, if I could convey to you in 30 seconds how much fun it is to make a movie, every single person would be doing it. If you want to make a movie, make it. And don't expect it to be The Godfather or Titanic on your first try. Make a movie. If it doesn't work, make another movie. If that doesn't work, make another movie and keep doing it until you are happy with the end result. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Folks, I'm going to watch Motivation. Ron Henderson, a.k.a. The Fitness King, with my guest, the one and only Nathan Block. He is the director and executive producer of Distant Calling Pictures. It's been a pleasure having you on today. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks for having yes. me on. We'll have to do it another time, honestly. I would love it. You'll get, get your next movie out. Folks at home, and all that you do, stay fit, stay blessed, and stay motivated. Great job. Okay. To book Ron Henderson for your next event, call 612-386-8178 or send an email to ron at fitnessking.com. That's ron at fitnessking.com.